It's obviously a, a change of plans for you this week. Uh, I just, I guess, tell me how it all went down. Yeah, uh, man, thankfully, uh, after Thanksgiving, I was like, I feel like I'll be fighting soon. You know, clean the diet up a bit. Was always training hard. But yeah, so Monday mornings, I wake up early and I go left with my strength coach. And then I go to the gym and clean for like an hour and then teach a jujitsu class. And, uh, and it was just an exceptionally like, good and hard day of training. Lifted heavy, did great, um, rolled super hard with some good black belts, went home and like in the middle of a nap, I was just kind of on my phone and uh, somebody tagged me on Instagram. Some young kid from the UK, he was like, with, with Robbie out, who should Ponzini be a fight? And I was on the list. And I was like, hey, no way. The fight opened up. So I ran to the scale and checked my weight and it wasn't too bad. And then I immediately text Coach Safe, kind of gave him the rundown. And, uh, and then I think by that evening, by Monday evening, the fight was booked. And I was like, cool, I'll be in Vegas soon and, and fighting soon. And uh, this would have been the only year. So next, so January marks seven years I've been in the UFC, which is awesome. And every year I've been signed, I fought at least two times, no more than three times. And this was the only year I was only going to fight once. And I was pretty bummed I didn't make it in on a December card, but it all worked out. And I'll be fighting on Saturday. I know, you know, you're a student of the game, study the sport. I mean, so what do you, what do you think of him as an opponent? What do you think of Santiago as, as a fighter? Yeah, I've been watching pretty much all of his fights. And uh, when he fought Jeff Neal, I had to watch tape on him and literally emulate him for that fight camp. Jeff did great. So I'm very comfortable with the style. Ponzinibbio and I actually fight kind of similarly. And, uh, you know, I get a striker who comes forward on pay-per-view. Man, I can't ask for a better, a better fight. He was very respectful of you, you know, and said, look, he, he likes to accomplish it. It's kind of funny because, like, since you've said, like, ah, I'm never going to be a champ, I'm cool, like, you're having a lot of wins and a lot of success. Like, is there ever a point where you go, well, wait a minute, maybe I'm better than I thought I was. Maybe I'm, I'm destined for more than I thought. Yeah, it was never, like, a, a lack of, uh, of, of, of confidence in my abilities, but I always set goals, like, very relative to where I'm at. And, like, I was just saying in the last interview, if my four-fight win streak turns into, like, an eight-fight win streak and I'm top five, then by all means, you know, take on whatever challenge presents itself. But uh, I, I'm just really doing this for the fun fights. I'm getting paid pretty well now, which is awesome. And, uh, and yeah, just, just ready to have some fun and, and, and go fight. I was really excited. When I took the Cowboy fight on short notice, Coach Safe was like, Morano, I, th I, I think we got it. And when he told me that, I was like, uh-oh, like, what did I get myself into? But when I like, volunteered for this fight, I had nothing but like, just excitement to, to, to scrap. I've been training really hard. And, uh, and it's funny, after enough time with the training, if I don't fight, I'll get, like, a little antsy. And, uh, and like, I listen to, like, a lot of heavy metal, and it'll just hit different. Like, when it, when it hits a certain spot, I'm like, I need to fight soon because I'm feeling it in, in just inside, and I'm just happy. Within a week, it, it panned out. Last thing for me, you said fun fights. I mean, stylistically, it seems like this will be a fun fight. Is that what you're expecting out of this? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think we're going to stand and box in the four-ounce gloves. I mean, I, I think it'd be weird if anything other than that happened. And, uh, and yeah, just, I mean, this is going to be a cool one. I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, did you ever talk to the OC about letting you walk out to your death metal? Because I know last time you said they kind of axed it. So, yeah, I always give them two song options. So uh, there's a, a hardcore band, and, and that genre is like punk metal, but there's a band called Turnstile. And they have a pretty cool song called Blackout, so it's not that heavy. They're pretty popular right now. Yeah, yeah. I actually saw them on like a Jimmy Fallon show. I'm not super like into that into that scene, but I'm happy to, to jam out to a good song. Hey, Alex. Um, where did your love for commentary come <clears throat> come from? Um, you're, you're very good on, on Fury FC. I just like, where did it come from? My man, so there's actually a show next Sunday on the 17th or 18th. We got all my boys Cameron Graves fighting on the main card, and I'll be doing the commentary. Uh, I enjoy it. So there's two things I like about commentary. One is I get to sit cage side, and two, I get to talk MMA. And if there's anything I can talk about with some confidence, it's mixed martial arts. But the way that actually happened is I had done some shows, like some grappling shows, some amateur fights in the past, but when COVID hit, we were only allowed one cornerman and my boy Cameron Graves was fighting for the Fury belt and uh and my striking coach was sitting over here and myself we were like who's gonna corner him and I was like you know what I think I can get cage side doing commentary you go corner so he did it so he can get two guys cage side and it kind of blossomed into a really cool recreational uh kind of hobby and I really enjoy it I, I really do it's fun plus sitting cage side's awesome it's the best seat in the house other than the ref is that something that you're definitely gonna do after you retire um, I mean, yeah, so long as the shows can stay, like, within, like, you know, within Texas, especially, like, Dallas, San Antonio, Houston, yeah, but I, I don't like to travel that much, because that means I can't train and coach, and that's my primary, my primary uh, goal in life. I really enjoy the coaching. Awesome. Thanks, man. Are you a better commentator than John Morgan? 
Uh, man, I'm not going to answer that question. You guys can answer that question, though, if you'd like. But uh, it's funny, on Saturday, I have like 40 of my jiu-jitsu kids competing at a tournament, and like we've been training for like two months and doing Sundays, and I was like, I wouldn't miss the tournament for the world. I was like, unless a UFC match opens up, and sure enough, the one time it did, like my daughter's even competing, but, uh, but I have all my coaches back home, Ricky Tercios, he'll be headliner, he'll be like, you know, you know uh, head coach there, so that'll be a lot of fun. Cool, thanks guys.